guys, we have a pretty serious problem. Just when you think Sony can't come out with better products, they launched not one, but two brand new cameras. And if you're trying to get into content creation in 2023, well, it seems like the choices are pretty endless. Right now, we're at Sony's Candle Trip here in Salt Lake City, and we've got some of the top creators in the space. So today's mission is figuring out what their go-to vlogging setup is. So that way, if you're looking to start vlogging in 2023, these are the guys to ask. Got some OG vloggers with us, so let's get their thoughts. Man, I just call us old. Or OG, OG? No, OG, he's that old. OG. But yeah, he, you're not too far off. But so we both have been using the Sony ZV-E1, which we actually launched a camera camp, which we was did. so exciting. And what lens we got on here, Jen? This is the 20 to 70. This is the GS F4. This is honestly like the best setup, and I like it because it has the new directional microphone. You can just toss on this little windscreen, and you don't have to use an external mic. But you can't. But which is Sony nice. has so many of these hot shoe mics, you basically just can plug them in. And I love this new one that they have because it's so small and compact. For vlogging, you really do want to have the smallest setup possible. At least in my mind, because I don't like carrying a lot of stuff. So yeah. this has been my go-to recently. My go-to vlogging setup would probably be the ZV-E1. This is probably one of the smallest full-frame cameras that you can pick up as of right now. It shoots in 4K, 10-bit 422, which is probably one of my favorite aspects about this camera. Autofocus is amazing as well. So. Honestly, if you're looking for a really solid high-end vlogging camera, this one would probably be it. Now on our first day here at Kando, they actually had a press release for the brand new lineup of their A7C, which is one of their most popular lineups of cameras. Not only did they come out with the A7C Mark II, which is an upgrade from the very popular A7C, but they also released an A7C R. Now there are a few differences here. So first off, the A7C II is gonna be focused a little bit more on the hybrid shooting, so you can still get some great photos and high quality videos. And you've actually got a 33 megapixel sensor, so you're still able to get some really high quality images. Whereas the A7C R actually has a 61 megapixel sensor, which is the same one found in the A7R5, which gives you a lot higher resolution if you're more into photography. However, since today's video is about figuring out the best vlogging setup, we're going to take the A7C R out of the equation. So realistically, well, it comes down to four options. You can go with the A7C Mark II, the Sony ZV-E1, the Sony A7S III, which I'm filming on, or the Sony A6700. Now, at the end of the day, it really comes down to the exact type of content you're filming. But let's go ahead and check out some of the other YouTuber setups. All right, we got the boy Ryan. We're here. We're here What's at Sony Condo. All right, so we're talking best all-around vlogging setup for creators, right? So in my mind, ideal world, like you want to do it right. You want to have a camera that's functional and can grow with you. I personally think the ZV-E1, one of the best compact creator cameras. They just announced the A7C Mark II here. Also really good, very similar price point. But personally for me, I think that that 12 megapixel sensor, better rolling shutter performance. I think overall, we're talking vlogging, right? Like we're, we really want that most smooth, organic look and feel. I think the ZV-1 is the way to go. Best vlogging setup, but we have to go with something that came out this year, would be the Sony A6700 and pair it up with the 11 millimeter F1.8, nice and wide stabilization and a 4K60. You're ready to go. No full frame? No, no. Well, we want to keep it light, you know, you're yeah, vlogging all day. You want to keep this, you know, as healthy as possible. And like I said, the A7C Mark II is much more of a hybrid camera, while the ZV-E1 has pretty much been stripped of all of the unnecessary buttons and really been streamlined for a vlogging camera. But for me personally, I'm still trying to figure out which setup I'm going to be rocking for my main vlogging setup. But we do have some much smarter friends on the topic, so let's go see what they say. What are the differences between these two cameras? Well, there's a couple differences. The main one is the A7C2 is a 33 megapixel sensor and the ZV-E1 a 12 megapixel sensor. This means a couple different things. The main thing is photo quality. You're gonna get better photos with the A7C2, not quite as good of photos with the ZV-E1. But the drawback, the ZV-E1 has 4K 120, 4K 60 without a crop. The A7C2 doesn't even have 4K 120 and it has 4K 60 with a crop. And the biggest one to me, because I love to shoot outside. Sometimes you can't see your screen very well, is the EVF. I really love to use the EVF just to review footage or to make sure my exposure's good, and it's a great and helpful tool. E1 does not have it, A7C2 does. All right, so we're actually here with the Sony team from Japan who basically made all these cameras from the ground up, so let's get their thoughts. This new A7C Mark II, uh -huh. and this new, new lens. Yeah, both are very lightweight and compact, yeah. It's also good at shooting photos and movies, uh, also good at vlogging, such mm. as this. Mm -hmm. Start. All right, I'm here with Jerome. Jerome, what are your thoughts on the new A7C2? I love it. Honestly, the small form factor is amazing. I travel a lot, so of course it's amazing to be able to have like that very small compact form factor with the new lens as well, the 16 to 35. I like the grip, very small, very light. So I feel like for running gun, if you're like traveling around, even if you want to put it on your shoulder on the camera clip, it's very light. So I honestly love it. All right, dog, what do you think of these new cameras? 
pretty sweet, dude. I will say, so the A7C2 dropped, what, yesterday? Yep. I was messing around with it. I was very impressed at like the image quality that it has with how small of a form factor it has. I really don't think you can go wrong with either of these. All right, we got the man right here. What's up, what's, what's up? What's your go-to vlogging setup for 2023? So I'm gonna be honest, I don't really vlog, but if I am gonna do a couple of bits here and there, I just use my phone, honestly. iPhone works great. The quality is incredible. I think sometimes we try to overcomplicate things. I and mean, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And honestly, like this has incredible AI. I mean, if I were to use this right now, it'll expose my face properly, even though right now it's probably a little under, but yeah, this works great. But just to make your decision a little bit harder, Sony has actually priced the A7C Mark II and the Sony ZV-E1 at the exact same price of $22.98. Actually, I think they're around the price. Same uh, exact price. Same exact price. If you're more of a photographer, this one is really good for hybrid shooting. So if you do photo and video, this would actually probably be a better option for you. Whereas this one is uh, more so video, but this one can do photos as well. But if you're looking for something with a little bit more megapixels, the A7C2 would probably be for you. Um, we tried out the ZV-E1 at camera camp last year. Yes, at... I tried both. Again, honestly, I like both. If I am to choose one or the other for more like a vlogging setup, I might go for the ZV-E1 just because it shoots 4K60 in full frame. This one has a crop sensor. Feels like this one is more so like video centric. So for vlogging, I'd love to choose this one with probably the same lens over here, the 16 to 35, especially because this is so super light. So to be able to hold it like this and to document whatever without tiring your arm, I feel like it would be very convenient. Now for my personal preference, you guys know I've been rocking with the Sony a7S III and the 16 to 35 as my main vlogging setup for the past three or four years now. And it really wasn't until these new cameras came out that I thought about switching my main vlogging setup to something more compact, lightweight, and easier to travel with. I also have been using the Sony ZV-1 Mark II because it fits in my pocket. It's not in my pocket right now, but it's just the perfect little compact on the go camera. So it depends on what I'm doing, but, and it also has built-in ND, which is, mm -hmm. yeah. we love to see it. We're really talking just like an all around budget friendly vlog camera option. I think the ZV-1 Mark II. Also great. Also solid. Small sensor, but it's it's a much more compact it fits camera. In your pocket. It fits in your pocket. Like it's got the pretty solid audio on the top. You can stick a mic on it if you need. I think that that is probably like, we're talking the, the most flexible, take it anywhere you want. That's the camera for sure. I got the ZV-1, but I love this thing. It's really so compact. compact. It's tiny. It's got a flip out screen. Fits perfectly in my little fanny bag yep. right here. Yeah, it gets the job done for sure. Yes, sir. In addition to that, the fact that the A7S III plus the 16 to 35 comes in at around a price tag of $5,000 is probably not the most budget friendly option. So unless you're looking for the highest quality vlog possible and you're also going to be using that camera for more cinematic production, then the S3 wouldn't be my first recommendation. No more Sony A7S III for vlogging? So um, I've been using yep. the Sony A7R Mark V wow. for vlogging. So it's like small, medium, big, it just depends on my mood. The A7S III's are my studio camera, so those don't move, mm. do not touch them. Yes. And then I've been using the Sony A7 IV also as well as a like vlog a Now on the other end of the spectrum, you do have the A6700, which is a brand new camera that Sony also just released. That's gonna feature an APS-C sensor, which is great if you're just getting started into videography, as you now have a lighter, cheaper body, but also the lenses are much more affordable compared to the G Master line. Man, for me personally, I'm an APS-C shooter, so I'm really loving the A6700, mm. mainly because it's a really nice small body, but then the lenses are also really small. Mm. So I'm rocking the 16 to 55. It's basically like a 24 to 70. But look at how much smaller this is compared yeah. to 24 to 70. So it's almost about the same size as the ZV-E1 body-wise. A little bit smaller, but then look at the lens, right? Yeah. This is more like my more running gun B-roll shot. Mm -hmm. But then when I want to do some like talking head stuff, and then I rock the 11 millimeter. Look right. at how small this guy is. So right here, the 11 millimeter, it's like a 16 millimeter on the crop. Mm -hmm. Perfect wide, can, you know, you can perfectly like this. So realistically, that narrows it down to two options, which is gonna be the A7C Mark II or the Sony ZV-E1. I think though that A7C2 might have a little bit better of like photo capabilities. Yep. So I think this would be a better just like all around hybrid camera for someone who wants to vlog, film themselves, but also maybe get some good shots. Yep. I'm not sure if there's a record limit on this either. I know there is a 30 minute record limit on the ZV-E1, so maybe that'll sway you a little bit more. I know vlogging, you're usually filming like shorter, clips. you know, clips, but strictly for vlogging, I'm gonna go ZV-E1. I mean, the thing with Sony is that there's a camera for everybody. So honestly, pick a camera, you can't really go wrong. The fact that there's AI features and the A7C2 and the A7CR, it's just gonna help all types of creators, you know what I mean? And so A7C2, A7CR, ZV-E1, you can't, you can't go, go wrong. wrong. What about lens of choice? So I think the lens 
of the year would be the new Sony 16 and 35G Master Lens Mark II. One right here. It's the, the lens that we're filming with right now. I mean, obviously it's great for vlogging, landscapes, all that stuff, but it is so, so sharp, so light. Just a perfect travel companion and a perfect pairing to either one of these cameras. A little bit of a toss up. If you need some flexibility, I think the 16 to 35 power zoom, the F4, great lens, really, really versatile. But if you just want an all around wide vlogging lens, you save a little bit of money, the 20 millimeter 1.8 is like fire. It just has an amazing look. The 1.8 aperture really helps to make that vlog feel, background separation look really buttery. So that's kind of the go-to. Here's what I'll tell you, invest in a good microphone. Mm. That's the key. If you got a good mic, just like that little crispy mic up there, mm -hmm. trust me, that will go a long way. Mic of choice? Mic of choice? <laughs> ECM M1 oh, wow, baby. Tiny. Yeah, this thing is awesome. You don't need to worry about wires, goes right on there. And one of the main features that I love about it is, is all of these different pickup patterns. This is a super directional front, so I can just focus right in front of the lens. I don't have to worry about mm. anything around it. Mm -hmm. And then the other one I love is this one down here where it goes left channel in front, right oh. channel in the back. So if I'm doing like oh, show and tell, yeah. like if I'm talking to the camera from behind, but there's something happening in the front, you it can still pick up both the audios. Or if I was asking you questions, yeah. like you're doing right now. I really love that feature there. Awesome. There it is, man. I love that grip. Can't beat it, man. PG Tech uh, Mantis, Mantis pod. pod. Yeah, this thing, once you actually get past that learning curve, it's a it's a great tripod. It does pretty much everything. But you gotta figure it out first. Yeah, for sure. <laughs>